Going back to the ship? Yeah, I'm heading back. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what, you, no, what, what the hell did you do? Rick, what did you do? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> what the Fuck, hell? Holy <laughs> shit! <Whoa. laughs> We're on fire! <laughs> We're on fire! <laughs> and we own. Back again. On like Donkey Kong. It's drunk. And Nate. <laughs> <laughs> renegade, up renegade, renegade Nate. TV, baby. Yeah. Renegade Nate. Yeah, I like that. Renegade Nate. Renegade Nate and drawn yeah. up, aka, AKA RTV. Renegade TV. <laughs> renegade TV. Coming to you live hey, from the up? basement, or as we call it, the lair. The lair. Yes. Oh snap! Yeah. Ain't no man cave. This the renegade the lair. lair. Yeah, hey. the renegade's lair. The renegade's Back lair. At it. Yeah. So, Lil Xan, uh, he's someone that I. Again, I'm never going to hate on someone for making money. Never. No. Nah. If you make your money and you ain't hurting nobody or you ain't killing nobody, you're all good in my book. What's Hov's song? Can't knock the hustle? You can't knock the hustle. Never. Never knock the hustle. Never knock the hustle. But the whole thing with Lil Xan is just, a, again, if you, got don't issues, take care right? of, if you don't take care of yourself and you don't take <laughs> care of, you know, again, my dad said this to me a long time ago. He basically said... You either it's like you either act with the money or the money will act through you because Ooh. that money wants to be spent. That Ooh. money wants to go out of your pocket. Oh yeah. You can't let it. You have to be a you, you have to you know, just basically take a breath, realize that you're still young, you still got your life ahead of you. You know, just be smart. Stack. Be smart. So, uh, the creator of this video, Sunny V2, He's someone who has come into his own as a creator, and he's really hitting a great stride here recently. Yeah, because he did one uh, where he was talking about Amy Schumer. Okay. And uh, he did one where he was talking about you know those primitive building channels where you see those guys out in the middle of the woods and they st and they just like dig out stuff. Oh, it's beautiful stuff too. He shows like he basically shows evidence as how most of those are fake. Yeah. Oh, Most of them are, are wow. fake as, a, as fake as a $3 bill. They scam it. Oh, yeah. And they actually, and here's the thing. It's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to have evidence of it. And he actually shows in the video just like, uh, yeah, why are there excavator tracks here? Like, mm. why, are the, why is there other people in the video working on it when it's supposed to just be these two guys? Mm. How are they getting concrete? From a uh, from a mud pit in the middle of a lake. I was thinking the same thing. How are they like? It. How are they building a sturdy foundation with rocks and mud? I just thought they was that amazing. I was well, like, man, these guys well, are and, amazing. And you see, that's the thing of it. It's it's uh, that's a hustle in its own right. And these kind and these countries there are and a lot of them take place in countries like Cambodia, Vietnam, and all these Southeast Asian countries where labor is cheap and a lot of the land is owned by certain by certain individuals. Mm -hmm. They just take that land and they build stuff on it. And then they just, after it's built, they just let it go. They let nature retake it, basically. Oh. And there's another, there is one guy, though, uh, Primitive Technology. He's really the only real one out of all the people who do it. He Well, I shouldn't say that. There's other ones <laughs> out there, but he was the one that started it. He's the oldest one. He's That's a pioneer. Real. He's the pioneer okay. that actually made the format what it is, and I respect the hell. He's Australian. He lives out in the bush in Australia. He's built like brick and mortar houses from like wood, coal, ash. He'll throw some shrimp on the bobby. Basically, yeah, yeah, might some shrimp on the bobby. Some shrimp on the bobby. Yeah, might. He just uh, yeah, does mate. his thing out in the bush. I might start saying, mate, mate, mate. Yeah, what's good, mate? Hey, mate. Tell you what, mate. Let me tell you something real quick. <laughs> they out on the outback. There's one thing you gotta look out for. It's not the ruse. It's not the crocs. You know what it is? What did it be, mate? It's the bloody dingoes, mate. The dingoes, mate. The dingoes, mate. Dingo I ain't me bloody baby. <laughs> dingo ain't me baby. Oh, bloody dingo ain't your baby, mate. Dingo ain't my baby. <laughs> it's a, oh, God. It's, 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 it's such a classic, classic line. Um, but, you know, if, you, if you're going to speak Aussie... Like true outback. Give Aussie. me some tips. You gotta I say, you gotta say if okay, you gotta say for women, you gotta say Sheila's, Sheila's, and for dudes, you gotta say blokes, blokes. It's like, oh there, see that Sheila there, mate. Aye, see yeah. that Sheila. Don't don't cross her, mate. She give you a right ripper right across the cheek. A right ripper. A right ripper. <laughs> a right ripper. Right ripper. Hey. And then of course that bloke over there 
A bloke over there, strong as a bull ox. You don't believe it. You should see him. He'd pick up a whole boulder over his head. He'd chuck it straight down the bo- chuck it straight down the road, mate. Chuck it straight out of Dango, mate. Oh yeah, you know, no kidding there, mate. <laughs> Next thing you know, he gets his didgeridoo, goes up on the rock, starts blowing it. Oh he- man, you gotta give me a class, Nate. You are fluent. <laughs> well, it's just years and years of practice, and also <laughs> just chatting with Aussies online. But anyway. Enough jibber jabbering about <laughs> Australia and New Zealand and all that. Let's get to this video, let's mate. Let's get some Lil Xan and uh, let's get some uh, Lil Xan uh, talk on this Sunny V2 video. Let's uh, get a crack at him. Yes, sir. Get it cracking. Reality is hit little Zan now. You mm-hmm. feel me? The money probably not coming in the same way. Scott's nope. trying to get thirty grand out of him to finish up the balance on uh, the G wagon. On the G wagon, he don't got thirty grand for it. Thirty grand when he had. Who knows how much money Bro, at one that's point? Like, I would, yeah, I would cut great. my arm off if Lil Xan has $30,000. It was just three and a half years prior that on the very same podcast, Lil Xan was sitting back and bragging about owning three different Los Angeles apartments. I have the same one 10 floors up now. Really? Yep. What? And don't you have another one on the street yep. too? And another one uh, on the same floor. Why do you have three apartments? One for my uh, parents, one for me and Eli, my hacker, and then one for uh, the hose. The hose? No Despite wonder he's broke. what seemed like an unlosable situation, it was obvious that over the long run, Lil Xan's failure was not only inevitable, but deserved. And it all began with what seemed to be a poor work ethic, dating all the way back to high school. So I failed every class up until I dropped out freshman year. Oh I have, lord. I just cannot sit down for seven hours a day. Now, we shouldn't make the argument that poor grades in school automatically result in a poor work ethic over the long term. There are simply too many examples of mediocre people performing terribly in school before going on to achieve greatness yeah. in a different that's field. a college However, dropout there's though, a bit right? of a difference like, between yeah college dropout whereas him not being bothered to even learn anything yeah like, that's you, a little like, different. you can still go to school and learn something yeah like, it, again it's just poor work ethic from the from the jump is just if it's evident like that yeah. i mean there's no turn this is like showing up in first grade they hand you a drawing and you don't draw it like, yeah it's just it's just like color it or whatever you do like, all of a sudden they hand you it, <laughs> they hand you a piece of paper it's just like I don't do this shit. And it's like, that's a hall pass to go to the principal's office. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, facts. Like, he had him work that he don't have. Like. Yeah. <laughs> God. Finishing school with bad grades oh, failing shit. every single class before dropping out in your freshman year of high school, as was the case with Lil Xan, establishing what you might call something like a predisposed naturally poor work ethic. They could never get Xan to do the shit that yeah. he actually had to do for his career. Like, I remember talking to Stad about it and he was constantly frustrated. There are going to be numerous examples throughout this video of Lil Xan And he smoked cigarettes to too! Whenever it was required. We already discussed him dropping out of school in his freshman year, but it continued into the beginning of his music career when he failed to show up to How old is Xan? Other big rappers who had given him an opportunity. He oh, kept missing the meetings. When at less than 2,000 followers, he'd be noticed by an individual named DJ Fu, who wanted to take Lil Xan to meet a potential manager by the name of Stad Quo, who uh. was an old school sober rapper and manager who had worked with Eminem in the past. If it wasn't for this guy, I would literally never have been discovered, never met Stat Quo. We wouldn't be uh, doing the No Jumper Day in the Life. However, as mentioned just prior, despite this insanely big opportunity while still at such a small follower count, Little Xan kept missing the meetings either as a result of being disorganized or because he thought the meetings were too good to be true. It's you, LA. You can't believe everybody. It's LA. It was a time when SoundCloud rappers were popping up left, right, and center to the point that yeah. it was becoming a meme. Uh, Little Pink, Lil Skies, Lil Pump with God, Gang. All He's these Lil Lils. Lil, 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 Lil. Oh, and also, here's the thing. Anthony Fantano, I disagree with on a lot of stuff. You've seen Fantano, Oh, yeah, I've right? seen his reviews. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sometimes he hits the nail on the head, and sometimes he's a bit over over presumptuous with his with his look. on it. I mean, I, that's just how I feel about it. Nah, but I, I still know. respect the man and his craft. I mean, he can, like... Any man that puts out as many reviews as he does, and I think the last review I watched from this guy, which I don't watch many at all, uh, uh, was a Ghostface Killer like Apollo Kids album. Yeah, and I more or less like I felt what he was saying, but I wouldn't have reviewed it the same way. So, well, again, it's just his way of approach versus your way of approach. Exactly. I mean, me, uh, like him, I saw his tier list of you know the Gorillas, right? Oh man, what love the yeah. Gorillas. Well, he did a tier list of the Gorillas albums, and he basically put an album that I thought was okay, I'd give it like a B. Mm-hmm. He put that as an S-tier album and he put my, like... Which one? 
uh, Plastic Beach. Oh, I feel you. Plastic Beach is a B. I like I like a, I like that album okay. See, I was kind of waving out. Like I listened to some of Plastic Beach, but I'm like well, you. I like the uh, earlier. Shit. Well, Stylo, Melancholy Hill. There's good songs on Plastic Beach, but dude, my favorite album by them, Demon Days. Oh, their second album is by far their best album. I just went back S- and listened S-class. to it. Yeah, I just oh, went yeah. back and listened to it. I love that album. Uh, dude. And I love the first album. Oh, the first album yeah. is an easy A. Yeah. Easy A. Yeah. I don't know like, which one Demon I like Demon Days, an S. Uh, Plastic Beach, a B. I would give... Uh, What's the, the newest one? Uh, Song Machine, which I'd give that one an A. That's a great album. I haven't checked that one. I had to go back and check Song that. Machine's a great album. Okay. It, it, there, I don't think there's a bad song on it. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, Humans, which... I'll give that one a B as well. Uh, the uh, Le- uh, Let Me Out's a great song. Uh, so is uh, Saturn Bars. Okay, yeah. And uh, then uh, the Now Now, I give that a I give that a I give that a B as well. <laughs> uh, again, and then the Fall, I give a D because that's just not a good album. <laughs> it's it's not a horrible album. It's just not, it's not a good, good. album. Well, it was recorded in 27 days on an iPad. I mean, oh lord, it's just technically it's technically impressive, but not. It's not a good. That's uh, not. Good that's not quality over quantity to me. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. You're good. Actually, Don't apologize. Artist, is he a rapper that is is truly worth taking seriously? The border between being a musician and being a meme. So when a song was released to Lyrical Lemonade, titled Betrayed, sung by an artist with a name as stupid as Lil Xanax, people had to <laughs> click to see if it was a meme or not. People clicked on it because they were like, we gotta hear what a little Xan sounds like. You know what I mean? And then, then they were actually like pleasantly surprised. The song was actually pretty decent, creating a perfect storm exploding its popularity. I've always said that it was just like the perfect combination of the name, the thumbnail, the title, the actual song it itself. Blows, it blows my mind, bro. And shortly thereafter, it would become the most viewed video on all of Cole Bennett's Lyrical Lemonade. Just how quickly you went from a total nobody to somebody that everybody knew. It's crazy. It was bro. so shocking, even bro. for me being like really close to it. However, countless comments along the lines of if he kept making music like this he wouldn't be a joke hint that after this project he'll be considered as somewhat of a one-hit wonder as six months later he released his long anticipated first studio album which will be met with many negative reviews from individuals like anthony fantano we're not even at the halfway point of the year yet and this is one of the worst things i've ever <laughs> whilst failing to achieve a professional review higher than two fantano out of didn't pull stars, any punches more than five no. out of ten the reasoning for the poor release would be discussed by adam 22 at a later date and it was what you might call unsurprising like i remember when those album came out right and i remember having a conversation with with stat and being like what do you think of the album because it was pretty obvious that the album was bad and put in like no work for the album and i remember having that conversation with him and if it was up to stat zan would have been sitting in the studio recording every night and instead he was just doing drugs and having random ass girls come over every night. The other issue might have been that after the insane success of his single Betrayed, Lil Xan might have been lured into a false sense of security about his future and talent as an artist. He might have felt as though he could now relax a little bit and take his foot off the gas, resulting in no. one incredible banger to lead the album, followed by 15 other mediocre songs. This is the self-described reason behind why T-Pain's rap career eventually failed and could certainly have been the same story with Lil Xan. Everybody's like, it's downhill from here. The analogy was if you pedal up the hill, you can coast afterwards right okay. you just stop working you no. have to keep working uh, <laughs> yeah. what they what they don't tell you is that you coast totally fine um there's another hill <laughs> right. so, uh, you gotta, you gotta right. keep going from little zan's perspective he would state that the poor performance of the album wasn't his fault it was instead the fault of his management i dropped like a, a mixtape that got way more like positive reviews than my album and mm-hmm. it should have been my album because my first album wasn't put together by me it was put together by my management and you know I love my management, but I mean, they f***ed my first album completely up. I, to the point where I didn't even pick the track list. Blame or, like, what game. songs were It was a blame game, so for sure. Blame game setting in with this kid. I mean, again, it not taking responsibility. It's like, your name's on the album, bro. Yeah, you gotta You're, take responsibility like for you, that, right? You ain't, like, you can say, oh, my That's management, my management, my management, oh, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, your name's on the album. Those are the people you're chilling with, man. If they yeah, ain't on the if same page, the you've yeah. Got, you've got handling your shit. What's that say about you? Yeah, if you don't care about who's handling your shit. Yeah. <laughs> However, this just revealed another one of Little Zan's flaws, a lack of personal responsibility. Now, we don't know whose fault it was at the first album. Total Zanarchy. In reality, it's usually a mix yeah. of both parties and is really the fault is it of better one like person that name? or another. However, good, Little Zan is the... Say what? Is it better like that name? No, it's a good name. I mean, honestly, it's... it's, uh, it's a, 
good tongue in cheek name. If you're going by Lil Xan, like how much better of a name could you get than that one? Not really. You couldn't really do that. I mean, honestly, for me, I look at that and I look at how creative he can be in small bursts mm-hmm. is okay. But in terms of long term creative, you know, trying to make an album, I ain't wrong with that. No, if he, if anything, I think he should be a singles artist. That's oh, it. Yeah, should yeah. be like a singles artist. Release nothing but EPs. Don't don't dedicate an album because you know in long run if that's the best you can do with long run production instead of short bursts. And that's the thing, right? Wasting the time, bro. Yes. You know oh, how hard man. it is to get studio time, that professional? Well, studio time, getting other producers in to help you, yeah. getting other musicians in, you know, depending on how you want to produce the tracks. And that's their money, too. Yeah, that's their money and their time. Yeah. Time they could be spending on another album, making man. even more money or making making something worthwhile. You got to up your price on Zan, don't you? To. Let's see, I need it. I need a lot Be of money. Honest. Man. If I you release something publicly under your name and it sucks, you unfortunately have to own the failure. Plus, yeah. most of the time, even if it wasn't, Royce the fire, fire you like way more when you just say, "Yeah, it was my Mel Karen." <laughs> <laughs> Royce got in that ass. Well, Royce don't give a fuck. Man. Nah, Royce is what Royce is old school. Man. Hey, he, tick tick boom. Yeah, take. Uh, you take talk about taking shots. Yo, Royce is gonna do that. Royce, I ain't yeah. mad at you, Royce. No because it displays humility and the desire to improve. Anyway, despite his first album being a bit of a flop, Lil Xan was still able to maintain his popularity after the initial blow up because when you look past the dopey personality, minor victim complex and actually watch him on one of these podcasts, he's a surprisingly likable dude. He's not an arrogant douchebag like for example Lil Pump and generally speaking, he's honest and transparent about the good and bad in his life. I'm talking about anything like, exactly. if you ask me anything I'll be like, yeah. yeah baby. His stupid stories about having multiple threesomes in the space of a week make him entertaining to watch and listen to, making him somewhat of a celebrity as opposed to a rapper. All the interviews with Lil Xan always, <coughs> like, they get as much as damn near some of my music videos, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, right now, at this moment in my career, I'm more of a celebrity than a rapper. You feel me? Because, like, I, I can't leave the crib without 10 kids coming up to me right as I leave the door. However, by the same token, the amount of stories that he has, which are to some extent based on poor life decisions, openly displays his lifestyle filled with a never ending cycle of short term pleasure. And this is the problem with so many of these SoundCloud rappers. The branding by default is the glorification of drugs, bringing hoes over to the crib every night, taking out loans to buy cars, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, expensive jewelry. They become so famous and successful while living this kind of life that they actually think that they're on the right path, when in reality, real long term sustainable success is, at least in part, determined by your ability to avoid these temptations. The other problem with living this kind of lifestyle is that it's usually accompanied by a multitude of poor financial decisions. In the beginning, Will Zan seemed convinced that this wasn't who he was. Do no. you go crazy hard with expensive clothes and jewelry and ridiculous bullshit? No. Or do you hold on to it? What's what's going on no, in your no, lives I'm right not now? Into the you got the- I'm in the grills and like MCM. Like, like I have like a chain, but like I, it's not like so expensive. It's mm. expensive, not expensive. I'm not into the whole jewelry. However, only six months later, in a video posted to YouTube once again by No Jumper, this seemed to have changed as Lil Xan's out of control spending habits and lack of respect for valuable items was put on full display. He'd start by mentioning that he would take any sponsorships as he was low on cash at the time. Money bag, cream soda, you wanna sponsor me? Do it. I will take any endorsements. I'm broke. However, he'd then go into Yo. talking about and reenact himself smashing his TV. I got so mad. I literally walked up in this the other day. I took this skateboard and and I was like, ah, ah, ah. then I'm like, I'm mad. Laugh about ruining a $1,200 hoodie after leaving it on the floor. So everything's on the floor. Expensive hoodies, $1,200 from the J. And then go on to purchase two copies of the game Destiny with the goal of showing the store some love. And honestly, two copies of Destiny, I do this place the most, you know? Now you could probably make the argument that this was just Lil Xan spending big whilst the camera was in his face. However, there was plenty of evidence to suggest that off camera, he was also quite unwise with his money. For example, in another no jump- Quite person, unwise. How he takes quite, seven of yeah. his friends to Universal Studios and pay for everyone's entry just to buy one drink before leaving. I'll take all my homies, I'll spend $700 to take seven of my friends in there just we, to get butterbeer. Just beer. to get butterbeer and we did. And I don't film it or nothing. In addition to this, Lil Xan would take out a loan to a purchase G-Wagon. a Mercedes Benz G Wagon, the price of which starting at around 130000 It's a nice ass wagon. Here's the thing okay, a lot of people don't realize this. If you think Lil Xan's in trouble now, imagine when the US government comes for his ass. On that tax money, bro? Oh, here's the thing I don't even think he's smart enough to put shit away for taxes. Well, that's my point. 
and saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah they ain't he, gonna have shit to give. They're gonna take Zans. Oh, they they're going to turn they're going to fist him, grab his insides and pull him inside out. <laughs> No, he won't be little Sam anymore. He'll be little Max. Yo. He'll be Max Little. <laughs> now he'll be reversed. Yeah, exactly. He'll be Max Little. I see you, Nate. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if they're looking out for that. Yeah. Well, know. again, I'm just, I'm just wondering what the hell this dude, like, again, the irresponsibility it, it stems from his laziness and everything because, you know, Easily. When he, when, again, when you're not willing to learn anything, Especially basic life skills. I was never ta- in school. We're never taught about taxes. We're never taught about saving money or investing in yourself or investing. I, we're never taught any of that shit. Never. I had to get that shit from my folks, and I had to learn a lot of it myself. Because you know, even though my folks taught me a lot of stuff, you know, I still had to learn a bunch of shit on my own. But yeah, again, just society keeps you in the dark on that stuff, man. Sometimes kidding. I think on purpose. Yeah, because I think they want to blindside you. Yeah. They want to blindside you and get your shit. Yeah, you got to earn your stripes out here. That's just like, again, you know, the whole thing with the government, you know, hitting me up every time tax season rolls around. I'm just like, I wonder if they're ever going to call my bluff one time and just be like, nah, you owe us more money. Like, I'm wondering if they're going to do that one time. Because I do my taxes. I go through a tax attorney. I claim everything. I basically, like, all the stuff that I buy for the channel and everything... I basically claim it as I'm a, a you know, under the letter of the law, I, where I'm a sole I'm a sole proprietor. I don't have a LLC. If I had an LLC, I'd be able to claim even more. Oh yeah. But I'm, I'm trying to get an LLC, but again, it like, takes it's, time. It does. It, it takes, takes time. too much damn time. Yeah. But it does. no but, local attorneys for that either, man. I've checked. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's all like they're online a lot yeah. of the time. And and the government ain't willing to because every time you log into IRS.gov, it's broke down. <laughs> it's it's either broke down or under maintenance. It's just like we're sorry on purpose. Routine maintenance for three days. <laughs> like wh- what? Three days? Hey, Are you man. serious? Y'all got all this money. Y'all can't get a website up there. Yeah. Come on, man. Uh, it's just like healthcare.gov. It's like give me a break, man. Healthcare.gov <laughs> when it launched, Jesus, just their server was just. It, it's like oh, this is our server, an iPhone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's what I see. Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> Stolas. I'm about to get a G-Wagon. Nice. My favorite car, dream car. Now, if we ignore the fact that Lil Xan would go into key his own car whilst angry at a later date. I just did this to my car. Scratched it, keyed it up. I just bought the key all the way. <laughs> the levels of stupidity for this purchase go pretty deep. Taking Man. out a loan to buy a car, moron. Taking out a loan to buy a luxury car just to flex on social media, double moron. Taking out a loan to buy a luxury car just to flex on social media whilst working in a creative profession where you could fall off at any moment, triple moron. Yo, welcome to Darth Vader. This is my new whip. She's like a 9 out of 10, she ain't like a 10. Which is pretty bad. It's my first car. However, the stupidity of his G-Wagon purchase was compounded even further when he would host a public event that would ultimately result in an extra $100,000 fine. On the 21st of December 2017, just before he'd buy the car, Lulzan would make a tweet which read as follows. If you live in the Inland Empire slash LA area and want to meet me tonight, pull up to 100 to 110 North 5th Street, Redland CA 92373, United States at 7.30. Now it's hard to call Zane an idiot for this one. It was still early in his career and the tweet was made made only four hours prior to the meeting time. He probably expected just a couple of people to show up for photos and autographs, considering the location was also on the very outskirts of LA. Well, as you might guess, this isn't what happened. Around 2,000 people showed up, cars and streets were damaged, and ultimately the police would have to send in the helicopter unit before little Zan was arrested for his own safety. I gave like a four hour notice, I was heading to my hometown, so I tweeted uh, a location, and then I just expected, what, like 50 people to show up? That's just how I am. Oh, I got there, and this video's on YouTube, it's like, 2,000 people wow. shot. What? But I got fined because uh, a lot of damage is to cars and uh, streets. Really? Yeah. yeah nice and the helicopters text. came out, and it's like 10 grand every helicopter. It was like Project X with the. It was a 100K bill. What? Yeah. Really? Another yeah. 100K. Lil Xan would go on to state that the event postponed his purchase of the G Wagon. Do you feel like you learned your lesson about that? My manager said that it, pers- it postponed my uh, g- me getting a G wagon. So <laughs> I was a little upset. Yeah. Which could also be interpreted as, over the long run, he was now a hundred thousand dollars further from owning the car outright. They said we built for a hundred racks, and then I remember having a conversation with him after that. And he's gonna be, he's like, 
damn bro like now it's gonna take me so much longer to pay this g-wagon off another rapper who owned one of these cars was mac miller who happened to be little xan's biggest right, inspiration yeah for yeah. real who's like your biggest inspiration uh, in terms of rapping uh mac miller yeah mac miller he's, he's sick right yeah like he's like a big inspiration like however when mac would unfortunately die only nine months later this also seemed to have an effect on little xan's desire to make music i'd be like legit crying like in my crib like this ain't true bro like mac did not overdose mac still alive mac still here i just saw mac two weeks ago when your hero dies i don't want to make music no more like he was like the reason i made music in this same interview little Zay would also talk extensively about his desire to quit music and simply become a public figure so that's why i'm not doing music like after i finished my can't be a public figure when you I ain't didn't doing know what nothing. i was signing up for i'm more of a, a, but waste a celebrity of money. than a than a rapper at this point so that's why i'm quitting rapping and at the end of the day if he's not enjoying music the tracks that he does put out won't have the required level of effort in order to compete with other artists who are giving it their all Lil Xan's attempt to lead music and rather become a celebrity slash public figure didn't really work either. After an explosive year on Instagram in 2018, his growth would slow dramatically Ooh. and has been in continual decline for the last 25 months, leading to an Instagram hey. live stream in December 250k to nothing? Yeah, uh, half a mil, dude. Half a mil people checking oh, out. Oh, half a mil to nothing. And then going negative a lot of days. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's zero right there. It's dipping below the... S oh, Yo, my God. that's like mine. Oh, <laughs> come on now, man. Oh, I ain't saying like, I mean, I'm cool with it. I don't push my social media like that. This nigga's like, he's a superstar. I mean, you got to have at least what? 500? Well, you got to at least have 500K. Easy. And, you know I mean? and you see, y'all can give me a few more followers, though. We're I'm cool with that. 268 right now, and I'm, I'm happy with that. But again, I wouldn't mind having a burst where we all of a sudden one day we're at half a mil. Oh and yeah, what? Well, I'd love that. But honestly, making half a meal, you know. Oh what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. Responsibly well, making half a meal. Well, and again, that's the thing. I mean, I, I I made a promise a long time ago to the people who helped me out on this channel. I remember because it, it was just me for the longest time doing the editing and everything. It was just me, and then I've had people join in and help me out, and I've told them, "Hey, I've got your back, and I'll help you out with whatever y'all need." I mean. Uh, one of my editors, actually, uh, his computer just stopped working on him one day. And I'm like, look, man, I mean, I can pick up the slack on the editing and I can help you buy the parts that you need to fix your computer. And I did that. And turns out, you know, now his computer's back up and he's editing perfectly fine. That's what's up. And again, you know, I, you have to work together and you have to try and do something that... You know, you have to try and do something that will bring everyone else up with you, and you know, teach them. Like, I taught Nick how to edit, and oh, yeah, you know, now he's one of my main editors, if not my main editor. And I look at, uh, I look at, uh, you know, other people who are joining in. You know, cynical. He's a dude who's uh, joining up with us now, and he's he's basically killing it as an editor now. And I, again, we have a thumbnail artist, and. I'm actually p contemplating doing a different style of thumbnails now, which okay, word. which I think will be I think will be really cool. <laughs> I'm excited to see it, man. Yeah, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, finish wrap this up. This up. Yeah. Yeah. Decline for the last 25 months. San Diego. In December 2021, <laughs> in which Lil Zane would show that all his poor decisions from the past were clearly coming back to haunt him. The industry just doesn't care. They just want you to pump out hit records, and when you're useless to them, just leave you in the dirt. Yes. In this video, they they yeah, they tell you that, though. Sober business yeah. minded manager stat quo for fueling his drug addiction after he'd supplied Lil Xan with drugs while on tour so he could go out and perform. And my manager was supplying me with the drugs. He knew all my plugs. So if I couldn't perform because I was withdrawing back then, because yes, I used to be a drug addict, you know, he would call, make calls, send $5,000 out here, $5,000 out here just to ship the drugs to wherever we're at in the world. This was just another example of Little Zan's victim complex and lack yeah, of man. personal responsibility. Oh, yeah, you, your manager, whom you are employing, yeah. is supplying you with drugs that you want. Here's the thing, there's being an enabler. I've seen that. Oh, I've yeah. seen people being enablers. I've, gr I've grown up around some. And here's what I'll say. Never, 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 never have I run across somebody who has been in the situation like little like Lil Xan and willfully takes the drugs yeah and, and is mad at the guy it's like being mad at the drug dealer for giving you what you want Facts. it's like being mad at, at again 
It's like, it's like bad, bad I blame bitch. I blame McDonald's because I'm so fat. It's like, oh yeah, what the f- dude? It's like blaming the sun for being hot. Yeah. It's <laughs> like fuck you, son. I'm gonna blow you up. <laughs> I it's want like, it cold you. out here, man. Yeah, it's like, fuck you, Moon. I want it to be dark out here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand so what you that do, either. Oh, I'm going to go on my Instagram story. I'm going to blame my drug addiction on Stat Quo. It's completely disingenuous. He needed to rely on his manager who doesn't even do drugs to get him drugs. Does this make sense to anybody? No. no. At a certain point, you just have to accept that like your problems are your own and that you can't yeah. just run around yeah. playing the victim. After many accused Lil Xan of snitching on his manager, despite he being the one with the drug addiction, Lil yeah. Xan would respond by That's saying that you can't snitch if you're yeah. not a gang member. Oh, you're a snitch now, bro. He didn't make you do that. All this stuff. Like, bro, how am I a snitch? Did I go to court? and rat on my gang. I don't have a gang. You're not as, you can't snitch if you're not a gang member, bro. Miss me with that. I'm trying to help other. That's uh, everyday snitching, man. I, I, mm-hmm. I hate to say it, but I, here's the thing. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm all about, you know, protecting people from going and serving needless time for stuff like weed. No. And, you know, if it's their own vices and they ain't hurting nobody, I don't care. I don't. I'm never gonna talk or anything like that. The moment a body hits the floor, bro, then we got something else to oh, talk. Man, about. that's real life. That's life we talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. We, we got about. something else to talk about when a body hits the floor. And those are all made up rules anyway, man. Like, well, again, there's no loyalty in any of those no snitching rules. No, and like that. but again, you know, for for him to do that to his manager and throw someone under the bus who was literally doing their job. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, that, that that to me, I think that's that's a level of just like disingenuous like behavior that just again, I'm hoping that he learns from this and becomes a better person. But well, where I is think he? It's too late. Oh, I guess we're gonna figure out where he's at. I'm trying to figure out where he's at. For artists in particularly my same similar situation. In the Instagram live stream, Lil Xan would also reveal that his manager had taken the G wagon from him, as Lil Xan still owed thirty thousand dollars on it, which Lil Xan would state was unreasonable, as he had it paid for the majority of it. Also, he took my car away too. That I uh, that I paid the majority of the money, and now he wants thirty thousand dollars of the remaining money to pay it off, which. I paid, literally, it's all my money in the car, and he won't give it to me. Without $30,000 to take full ownership of his G-Wagon, a declining follow account across each of his social media platforms, and no new music in over seven months, it seems like this could possibly be the end for Little Xan's career. Yeah. Man, you gotta, you gotta make better decisions, man. You gotta make better life choices. Ain't that the truth. And uh, the thing with uh, Xan, man, it's like he got caught up in the... The fantasy of what he thought the industry was. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And uh he's actually now living the reality uh to a detriment <laughs> it yeah. seems, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Definitely. And uh he's not right now it doesn't seem well from where the video leads us off, I don't know if he has the support system to really rebound like we would like him to. I ain't saying he can't rebound, but I'm saying it's gonna take a lot within himself to turn it around. You can't, especially with the victim complex and things of that nature, man. You can't be blaming everybody for where you're at. If you're in a shithole, man, like if if you're in the shit, yeah, and you put yourself there, yeah, it's no one's fault but your own. No, nah. and the fact that you want to blame others for literally doing what you told them to do—that's the thing. Like you told them to do that. You told them to do supply you with drugs. You told the dude. Like you're you're an adult making a conscious decision. Oh yeah, you have to take responsibility. But it's uh, uh, hitting on that same point: the adult taking a conscious decision uh, in this new age. I feel like it's. I think it's a shame that we have to bring this stuff like this up. Yeah. But uh, it it has to be hit on because uh, yeah. a lot of youth is blind. They see Zan and they think that's what they're supposed to be doing. You know. So I'm I'm glad that we can step in here, watch a video like this, and kind of like. I don't know. I ain't saying like what we say is always right, but I am no, going to say like you need to think about your decisions in life and take a story like this and learn from it. Yeah, for sure. Live it. What we talk about living and learning. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes Live, you take an L. Yeah. Try, yeah. Just take the L, take a knee and try and make and just, you know, grit your teeth and make it through it. That's yeah. all you can do in certain cases. No doubt. And Lil Xan doesn't seem like he's done that. He seems like he seems like he's just 
constantly trying to look for a way out he, that doesn't involve him taking the brunt of anything. He wants to push to blame. Yeah. He wants to basically make, you know, throw someone else under the bus to, you know, to make sure he doesn't wind up with anything. Hey, man, you write a check, cash that shit. Yes. And make sure it don't bounce. Yes. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah. Save your money. Save your money because that that hit don't last. I I think it was uh, Be Real who said that, you know, from Cypress Hill. He basically said, you know, that check don't last, man. You know, it, yeah. it, you have to save your money. That's the he said it's the number one thing I would tell any rapper coming up. You know, it doesn't happen overnight, but it can go away. But it can go away overnight if you ain't smart. It all looks good, man, and it's hard to achieve a lot of the things they were talking about. G wagons, man, like yeah, that ain't no cheap vehicle, man. And no, uh, you know. Uh, on top of all that, man, it's like you said, it's just just as going as dude, quick as you make it. So yeah, and especially if you're going out buying G Way, dude, dude, get a friggin' Honda Civic. Yeah, just pimp for out, real. Pimp out a Honda Civic, dude. You can get a good Honda Civic for ten thousand dollars, or hell, give you one better. Get yourself a uh, Subaru WRX, like a two thousand five Subaru WRX. Tear down the engine, rebuild it, like pimp that thing out. Facts. You will have a ballin' ass car. I mean, look. I, let's see. Subaru. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make w- lemons out of lemonade, X guys. Two thousand. Or lemonade out of lemons. I said that back. Impre- yeah. Subaru Impreza <laughs> 2005 WRX STI. Yeah, look at this thing. Whew. Yeah. Thing of beauty. I'd drive that in Forza. Oh, yeah. yeah these things are ballin' ass cars. And they're good off-road. They're good on-road. They look good on-road and off-road. And not only that, but they are so easily customizable. And it ain't going to break your pocket. No, it ain't. I mean, look at this. You can get a used Subaru Impreza right now. There's some on here that are pretty expensive because they're sort of seen as a high-end car. But in comparison to a G-Wagon? Yeah, like right here. You can get this $13,000 right here. got 262,000 miles on it. But guess what? You can tear that engine down and you can make something out of that. You can make something out of that. Dude, and if anything, you can rally race with it. Yo, go rallying, up, man. Have fun. No Show doubt. people out there having, that you're having fun. Just like do wheelies and the do donut or don't do don't wheelies. You can't do a wheelie, <laughs> freaking impressive. Do uh, donuts in the parking lot. Just like flip the peace sign out the window. Be like, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if you want to show off, man, show off. But be smart. It should be for the. Well, I, I can't say just for the fun of it because that would kind of dismiss everything I said. Well, but. Well, you can have your fun. If you're going to take on a project, you should have fun with the project. Yes. I do believe Have that. fun with the project, but again, you know, just don't put all your eggs in one basket. And never that. No. Oh, no. Diversify your funds. Exactly. Diversify where your money is. Yeah. yeah. Like this house. Like like this house, everything that's in it, my truck, my... Again, I'm, there's stuff I'm, I really need to work on, but... I'm happy where I'm at right now with everything being where it is. Me too, Nate. I'm happy and where I'm, I'm at right now too. Yeah. Hey, no doubt. Being happy is probably the most important thing to be. Peace of mind, baby. Because guess what? It means that your heart ain't working against you, and it means that your mind is in, is where it needs to be. Hey, that's knowledge dropped right there. <laughs> we just dropped knowledge on these names. Oh, yeah. And, but, all right. We're going to peace out from here, everybody. <laughs> so this was Lil Xan Deserves His Failure by Sunny V2. If y'all want to see more from Sunny V2, click his name in the title of the video. And I guess until next time, everybody, signing off, I'm Nate. Yo, drawn up, man. And we'll see y'all later. Peace.